You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, episode 64, Stonewalling Your Players. Today we talk about stonewalling your players in your game. We discuss how far you should let the other players run without shutting them down. We also discuss why you should gently let your players down if you are going to limit their actions. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level Up Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person, he won't stop you from putting on the mask, Jared. Hello, everyone. Aaron, good day. Jared, good day. How are you? Right, right, right before we, we started this podcast, you had a pretty incredible announcement that I was like, man, I, I wish did. I was rolling with yeah, you when um, you first announced this. So I announced it to you first. I'm going to announce it to our listeners. Um, so now being 35 years old, I have now decided that I am no I am giving up on the division between DC and Marvel. Um I think that both comics should or that all comics despite publishers should be appreciated in their own light for wonderful stories and wonderful characters. Again, this is super adult of you. How did you where did you have the serendipitous moment? Uh, you know what? It was. A, uh, I was talking to my brother about Thor. Okay. And um, specifically the the run. Ugh, I forget the the writer now. Of course, now in the time that. Um, but there was one writer who did a Thor run, and I uh, I, I read that whole run, and it was fantastic. It was one of the best. It's when uh, Asgard ends up like being over Oklahoma. So that might help people narrow it down to which which one I'm talking about. Um, it, it's it's a fascinating uh, comic. Uh, I loved it, and then like I sat there and I'm like, man, I've really been down on Marvel, even though they have some incredible characters, incredible stories. They do, and like I've just been hating on them because I love Batman, and Batman wouldn't hate. Listen, I mean, you're 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 wearing your t- your team shirt. You had the D and the C on it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, like. But, like, just because I wear a DC shirt does not mean that I can't appreciate Marvel. This is the true evolved sports fan type take as well. When you start, like, looking at, like, people that you hate in sports and you're like, I just hate them because they're on the other team and they're better. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> and, they're, and they're good. They're like, that's the reason why I hate them. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Marvel's better than DC. <laughs> Let's not go that All right. far. Yeah, sorry. I didn't. I, um, I, 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 I I, I stepped it back. I stepped it back because because I'm just gonna put the division wall right back up. Okay? Yeah, I got, go, like I got the Berlin prick, Wall. Just, the prickly porcupine you know? over here is going to show his his, his uh, spine. I, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's better. It's uh, there there uh, there are things that you can appreciate. There are it. things that I can appreciate. Um, I ended up watching. Uh, so I got sick a couple of weeks ago, as you know. Mm. Um, and I ended up watching every Marvel movie. I I, I was really really sick for 48 hours um and i mean essentially the only thing you can do is, is watch movies try to keep your mind off of like, being sick being sick um and i watched like pretty much every marvel movie that i that i had not seen mm-hmm. you know? like because i had seen a couple like uh captain marvel and and, mm-hmm. and most of the uh captain america's mm-hmm. um but i i finally ended up watching like avengers end game and end game part do and Mm-hmm. <laughs> all of them all A's of Ultron I'd never seen like I'd only seen the first Avengers mm-hmm. um you know what it, it, it's kind of funny like as, as people have raved like Marvel they make the best movies ever I, I I actually like from an objective standpoint was not all that like this is the greatest movie ever like Thanos is the, the greatest villain ever conceived I, I wasn't I was like hey, it was good it was a good movie like, don't get me wrong. That's that. Uh, that's the thing is that that I feel you get out of them is a consistently good movie. Like if you go watch it, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, like I I didn't walk out of a single one of those movies like or walk out of, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I didn't end any of those movies being like, well, that was a f- waste of my time. That was a dud. Like I mean, like and again, you you're you the listener, you might disagree, but I mean, for the mo- for the most part, they're all pretty consistently good. 
Now, like, then again, I don't think anyone should listen to my movie recommendations because the whole world hates Batman versus Superman, and that is my favorite film of all time. <laughs> like, I, I freaking love that movie so goddamn much. It's it. And, and the whole world hates it. The whole world hates it. But, like, I'm like, it's the Batman. I, I, I you know, I know people hate on Ben Affleck, but, like, he played the Batman that I've always loved the most, which is the paranoid, kind of jaded, <laughs> like Bruce Wayne, who's like, I I am friends with these people, but I have plans on killing all of them if need be. <laughs> like, that is my favorite freaking Batman. Um, you know, the 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 true dark knight. Um, so Yeah. yeah. What's our topic for today? Now that we went off yeah. on comic books for like, I don't know, five I, well, minutes. I, again, I felt like it was important. If you've it been, is. If you've been listening to this for a while, you're you're probably like, oh, Jared is... Evolving as a human being. Is evolving as a human you can't being. can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can. You can. So uh, today we're going to talk about stonewalling your players. Okay. And as a player, I hate this. Okay. As a GM, there is a level of necessity to shutting your players down, but doing so gracefully. Um, so just for our listeners, um, when Aaron says that he hates it, so, like, there's Rage Against the Machine, the band. Aaron pretty much, like, Rage Against the Wall. Like, he <laughs> rages. It, it sticks in his craw like a bone. <laughs> like I think, I think if you've ever played a game and your GM has shut you down on something that you're trying to do, just totally said, nope, not happening, and, like, they shut down all avenues. It is just like the most infuriating thing. It is the it's the best way to get your players to disengage with everything that you're trying to do. It, it's it's you know so for for our listeners, you might have a a group of gamers that that know that you're like oh I've done it to them multiple times, no one's ever complained. Uh, they're they're complaining in their head or they're complaining after game. Um, they're just being polite and not complaining to your face. Yeah, they're going, Rick is the son of a bitch, and he's not letting me do X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. He's not letting me tackle the problem in front of me the way that I think I should be able to tackle it. And I mean, uh, stonewalling, so I, I I will always disagree with stonewalling because um, our, our friend Nick put role-playing, uh, one of the reasons that he loved role-playing more than video games was he said that he has no boundaries. And that is a true statement. That is one of the great advantages that role-playing has is that I'm not, you know, it's funny because I'm playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I know it's been like 15 years since it's been released. It's Victorian England, so I can at least like have my guns. There are mm -hmm. no cars, but I can at least have guns. I'm wondering why there are no free horses in that game. There are carriages, but there are no horses. And it's like, I just want a horse. I don't want a whole carriage get up. But we're like, like just an, a horse like illegal in Victorian Europe did it have to be attached to a carriage I don't know maybe that's a thing <laughs> you digress <laughs> I digress <laughs> to an extent because I'm just saying laws like I don't know the laws of Victorian England but I digress <laughs> <laughs> um, stone you know there, there's a part in Assassin's Creed where you get too close to the boundary and all of a sudden it's you know like unstable area can't go into it and role playing doesn't have that if your three players say you know what we're getting on a plane and going to Tibet a fast dancing GM has the capability to be like okay you buy three first class tickets to Tibet you know you land there and you know immediately you're encroached upon by three former Nazis who don't want you to be there why? I don't know. We're going to figure it out together. And I'm going to build a story off of it. It, it really depends on how, how intense you want your... Because uh, we, we talked about it in, in, a, in a prior podcast about guiding your players back onto the track. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on how far off the track you want to let them go or how far you want to dance with your players. A lot of GMs will say, my world has zero boundaries. And I, I think that if you have no rules in your mind about where the players should go or, or there are no rules in your mind about when to guide the players back you know it is 
it, it's it's going to be really hard for you to get the players back to where they want to go. That's that's a true sandbox type game. It is, and and the thing is with GMs, and is as we talked about in the previous episode, um, it's it's the gentle guide, and it's also the informing the players. Like, if you guys go off to Tibet, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm going to close the game because I've that's not the story. Like, what we'll do is you'll land in Tibet, and we'll say you lived happily ever after. Or, or you can have can... them land in Tibet, and you can try to figure out what you want to do next week. Right. There's, And that's that's the fancy dancing. Like, yeah. for me, I would prefer the fancy dancing rather than closing a game, uh, especially if I have players that I'm really uh, – or characters that I'm, I, I feel are really cool and that I want to explore what they would do in Tibet as long as my players aren't just being jerks. Because sometimes your players can be jerks. Yes, yes, your players, you. your players can be jerks. I, I've definitely been a jerk of a player to you as the GM. I, I'm sorry for doing that. Well, I'm sorry for a lot of things. But yes, I mean, like, I mean, it's it's it, it goes both ways on that. But you're again when you play the GM. One of the things you also have to think about is that you're not just playing uh, the role to capitulate and make your players happy. Mm-hmm. Okay, because your players can screw up things that you were doing and they could screw up everything for the entire table yeah okay one player can destroy a game depending on what actions they choose to do especially if they do so as a group of players you know and it, it's i mean as a storyteller you do that's where really the stone wall is used in a litigious manner litigious I don't want to say litigious. I guess there are times when you might say, like, we shouldn't do this. Or you could interject. You could break the fourth wall and come in and say, listen, if we're going to do that, you have to understand the consequences of what's going to come. Your consigliere mo- yes. moment. Um, you know, like, for example, one of your players like, I'm going to go rob the first bank. I see. And you tell them, like, dude do that your character's gonna be wanted he doesn't have a plan he doesn't even have a mask right now like perhaps this is not the best move that you could make and it's the gentle guide don't do that you're you're basically saying don't do that i will probably tell it for you but typically if if we were to do something of that nature jared would just go all right that's what you guys want to do he writes us up a little outro for it because guess what you're gonna get caught (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, like, and and I have written outros before. You know, I I've written, uh, written, written. Uh, I I've written, you know, passages where that's it, that's the end. Like, you guys go in and you guys come out and you're surrounded by cops. And do you want to go out shooting or do you want to go out in handcuffs? Because those are the only two solutions. Um, and it, and it, it, you might say, well, you know that's stonewalling your players and it's it's really not because it's just when you can see the end of the tracks it's still the player's choice to head into that tunnel where the train is coming through the other side you know you're telling them flat out like uh there's a there there's a light and it ain't daylight in that tunnel it's a train um your players at the end have made that choice now you can choose to fancy dance and be like okay here we go you're going to rob the, but at least alert your players to the natural consequences. Like there's a high probability. Partic- particularly if they're going to do something that's going to be egregious, could potentially end in like the end of the characters completely. Like, I mean, like if one of your characters says, I'm going to shoot the king with my crossbow. Like just, yeah, just hip fire your crossbow at the king and... <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and it's kind of funny, you know, the, the the times that Aaron and I have at this moment talked about stonewalling player is when they're about to do something egregious, out of character, something majorly disruptive, and let's just say downright stupid. I'm going to yeah. go rob a bank with no equipment. I'm going to go hip shoot the king with a crossbow. I'm going to fly to Tibet with no plan whatsoever. Yeah, if the, if the player is doing something so off the rails from where you are right now, like, it's it's like a 180-degree divergence from what you're currently doing. I mean, you got to be like, you you got to come out and be like, what's going on? <laughs> and, and, and there's, the, <laughs> to my point, um, what's the motivation? Is it, is it this player likes disrupting stories and, and, and you know 
that this is kind of like their their thing. They they love just throwing oddballs at the storyteller and and you know seeing how you react because they find it funny. Um, how do the rest of your players respond to that? Um, are you thinking of your whole table in, in that moment? If are they all sitting around and going like, well, Jared's at it again, you know, going screwing up the whole story because he wants to, you know, ax murder or crossbow murder a king. Um, you got to look at the, the player's motivations. Why is he doing that? Is he bored with the game? Is, is the game not, uh, what they're looking for thematically? Is it just they're bored in life? And they're like, well, they I just have a bad day. Do they have a bad day? <laughs> is this typical behavior for them? Cause I've, I've met the gamers that, that literally quite make it their mission to seemingly shatter stories of GMs. And they're very proud of it typically. And I've yet to understand the motivation psychologically. Some behind people just it. want to watch the world burn. Jared. Yeah. That's, that's not a thing. Um, <laughs> Because I saw it a lot in LARP, and they were like, yeah, I did it again. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> like, you, you tool. You freaking tool. You, I mean, again, you, you, you know the player when they're trying to ruin something. And again, you can make a decision there. And this is one type of stonewall. I don't want to just get stay focused on this one here. But you know when that happens that, like, if you have six players at your table, one person is like, I'm going to shoot the king, right? And it's like, uh, you know, radio record screeching noise. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, stop. Okay, wait a minute. If you hip fire your crossbow at the king, I need to let you know what's going to happen to your band of merry adventure. <laughs> You're all going to get gacked by the king's guard. Okay, you do not, you do not survive. There is not a combat at the end of this because we're not going to play it out. Okay, yeah. you will lose because eventually they're going to have everybody. You know, eventually I will, you know, boil the ocean and I will come after you. <laughs> I mean, unless you've got, you know, level 40 and they're in a level one town and then they can murk the whole town. But again, is this counter? What, what, what's, what's the goal of that, though, there? I mean, it, it t- tell me at the end of that, if they decide to go ahead and do that, how the heck do you get them back onto anything that resembles the story you want well, to tell it, it, that exactly you have to take your own feelings into account as a storyteller and and one of the things that you know if you have a group that they're like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna take over this town on a whim i still might not stonewall if the entire group is in agreement. that's what the group wants to do together that's what the group wants to do together. But typically you'd figure that out as motivation for the group in your session zero. Exactly. Not, not on the fly, like you're talking to the king and it's like, going to hit fire. And the, and, the, <laughs> and the question is, you know, did something happen in the story that's causing this? They're bored. They haven't had combat in seven sessions. It's all been diplomatic talk and back alley deals. And they're just, they've had it up to here with you. And they they, they, they want to fight something. You're not um, you're not satisfying their needs that they would need in the story. Right. Or is it because everyone's just acting silly that night? You decided to break out your 35-year-old scotch and you all just polished it off right before game, and they're all a little drunk. And in that case, you might want to be like, Well, guys, you know, not not a great idea. This is this is what's gonna happen, and blah 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 blah. And they're like, ah, oh, we're still doing it. This is why I I don't actually very much advertise the idea of combining alcohol and game, but I know it's a very common thing. Um, but in 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 the end, do you stonewall your players from that? Again, it's your whole team. Um, take that second, take a second to breathe. Call a bathroom break. You know, like I need a bathroom second go in the bathroom weep for a couple of minutes at the loss of your story try to figure out what's going on why is my whole crew suddenly gone dumb and it, it's it happens i've i've seen those nights where everyone goes dumb yes it happens it happens collectively where everybody can can just like dominoes falling into place everyone's doing the wrong thing at the wrong time and it, it happens and you're just like what has gone wrong here? We, we've played a good, serious game for 45 sessions, and then suddenly tonight, everyone just took their stupid pills, 
collectively, they passed him out right before game. They're like, stupid pill, stupid pill, because we're going to do some dumb shit tonight. <laughs> so, again, now, when you're examining this, this is one type of, of scenario where you might decide to stonewall your player there. You might say, okay, well, they catch you pulling the pulling the, the draw on it, and they, they stop you, okay? I guarantee you, if this situation happens and you stop the player from enacting the situation, they're going to be pissed, okay? Oh, yeah. They're going to be pissed that you're not going to let them do that thing. And one of the questions you might have to ask is, well, are the players now doing that because they're so disengaged from my story because I've been doing this to them all along? And that's one of the questions that you start looking back on. This is where stonewalling gets bad. Yes. Are there no ways to solve your problem besides the one that you have figured out in your Ladies head? Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the rage. Because <laughs> we are going to talk about the storytellers that if you know that you always stonewall, or if you've never examined, do I stonewall my players? Do I try to make them hit point A, point B, point C, and I will stonewall them from not going any other path your, your story should have multiple paths to getting you out of the woods effectively if you do not have multiple paths as a gm if you have not thought up other ways to execute a plan if it must be done somebody must talk to the wizard in the keep who gives them the quest to go into the forest to find the elf in the forest to make a magical bowstring and then you go back to the wizard in the keep and oh by the way the wizard in the keep had the answers all along and somebody asked the wizard in the keep the first time if they had the answers and the wizard in the keep went well I couldn't do that because you didn't go into the woods the forest to get the magical bowstring to come back here did the players need to do all these other stupid things in order to accomplish it, would the players have not done them had you given them the answers? Because would the answer have not made sense had the wizard provided adequate information? Do you feel the rage, ladies and gentlemen? I hate I hate this so much because it is it is the the idea of again, you're not playing a video game here. Okay. You are telling a combined narrative story. You have you you are doing a choose your own adventure book to get to the end of your story. Okay. You have it confined. It's 200 pages, but guess what? Even in the best choose your own adventure books, you could read 30 pages and be done with that book. It's true. Uh, and, and I mean, like <laughs> it is so freaking true. You, you can have, a, I would say a good storyteller like myself. Um, that was tooting my own horn. That was a little, <laughs> I'm so great. Okay, I feel bad about that. You're more uh, practiced. I'm more practiced. A more practiced storyteller will always worry that their players are going to solve their entire freaking story in three freaking moves and be done. I'm worrying about it to this very day. I, I got a game going on right now where I'm like, first night I'm like, the guy's got this wrapped up. And then I talked to Aaron about it on my way back from, you know, Ohio. And Aaron's like, we have no clue where we're going. And I'm like, really? You don't have this solved? Like, I thought you guys did. But you guys have the, again, this is the thing. Because you know the answers, you think by giving the players the answers, they just know it too. They've just put it all together. Like, you you told them Forbidden Bottom, and like, that's the answer. And of course, now that I've told them that, they know that everybody knows that that's the answer. That's the key. And nobody at the table knows it. Nobody knows what that meant until they put context behind it, they don't know what it means. It's not like you, where you have all the context behind the curtain. Again, th th this goes into to the, to the choose your own adventure novel, okay? There are multiple ways to solve the problem, and you need to let your players think of those different ways to solve the problem. And you need to be, know as a GM, how are some ways to get to the answer? You should have a flow chart. Uh, I, Highly recommend a flow chart. Flow if, charts are awesome. If you think about how you do it or the backwards design methodology that Jared always Love talks it. about, okay, with the Socratic method, asking how would somebody know this? Because there's also going to be those times when your players, you're going to give them all the answers, you're going to give them all the information, and your players are going to sit there and go, uh, and they're going to be like sitting there with like blank looks on their face and like their eyes are glazed over and they're drooling and they don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you're like, 
guys, guys, I've given hello. it to you. Hello, I've given it to you. I've given you the answers, and your players aren't going to know what to do with the information that you've given them. They're not, and and you know, it, it, but back back to stonewalling in particular. You know, if you feel that only stonewalling is the only recourse that you have, uh, you've gone completely to the antithesis of role playing. Uh, role playing is is imagination; it is without boundary, um, and and the only boundaries are natural consequences, or they should be natural consequences uh, to players' actions and players' decisions. One of the things that when we start stonewalling is it robs your players of their agency in the world. Again, we talked that was the podcast that we talked about. It was the agency in the world versus yep. you know what what is true player agency in the world. The true player agency in the world, and I, I think our listener Chris hit this I perfectly when he actually talked about it. Um he did a, th- that story on the ship. Okay, mm-hmm. with the Nazis. And it was only three sessions of a story. You know, it's a small thing, but still, he confined his players to a border. He the players knew the bo- the border immediately. The players didn't say we're getting a dinghy and we're going to land. Okay, like that. He that didn't happen. And if it did happen. Okay, maybe you let the players do that. And they they ride off to land. They get eaten by a shark. Okay, like. Like I don't know if that's the way that your players want to go. You can let them do that. You and what you what you're effectively showing your players is: listen, if you don't want to participate in the game that's being told, then I have no responsibility to keep you alive at no. that point. Like, like you, th- this is this is true co- harsh consequences. Like, I don't I don't need to tell a story that fits your crazy machinations that you have. And, and you know, it's funny because uh, I was talking to my brother about um, one of his games that he did recently. Uh, he got a group of friends together to do a Call of Cthulhu game, and they were a salvage crew. And they sent to an abandoned ship, just kind of like Chris did. Um, except his was an active vessel. Mm-hmm. Um, they had every chance in the world to hop back on their scavenge vessel. They could have fled. And, and 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 gone see around haunted ghost the the players made the active choice to stay in the story now if they want to hightail it that is their freaking choice the story is then over because again it's like what you said this is a shared narrative they have a responsibility to the story as much as you do as a as a gm master of ceremonies, whatever title that you have, they have a responsibility to that story as well. And if they're going to abandon their responsibility, then the story is essentially over. It is time for a different story. And if they're like, well, but, but we wanted to, the story of, of the, the bar fight drunken, we were going to get to land and just get into a bar fight. It is up to you as the storyteller to decide if that is a story that you were interested in freaking telling. If you're like, eh, sure, if that's what's going to be fun tonight, and you know what, I could I could use some ruckus fun my own self. I've run stories that were ruckus fun. I, I Ruckus but fun. Know, but know what they are going in. I mean, if you're doing a long campaign and your players just abandon everything with your story, it's like, what the hell happened? Examine why, you know. Yeah, it's, it, you, you, go, you go, what the hell happened? But also, you got to say to yourself, this is my story. The players can circumnavigate major parts of it by doing different things, by asking the right questions. Because this is what you have to think to yourself. Always think this when somebody asks you a question is you are the, the NPC who possesses the information they need to have. And once they get the magic bowstring, I will reveal the information they need because the magic bowstring will trigger my memory or something like that. Somebody goes, goes well, what about, uh, you know, these elvish ruins that that we're talking about are like, like oh, I heard the dark elves live in those forests or something like that. And you, you, you start asking questions that lead the, the, the mage or whoever's giving you the information to say, well, he knows the information and you're asking him questions and he's amenable and friendly to your guys. Why would he just not tell them the information? Right. And in this situation, the one that we're talking about, the players are actually engaging in their responsibility to the narrative. 
they are still within the boundaries because they are still engaged in the story. They're still going after, I don't know, whatever the bowstring brings them, but, um, or whatever information that the maid, the old mage, the old wizard has. Um, but they're still going for it. All they're doing is skipping steps. Yes. And that doesn't mean that your players are going to necessarily not go retrieve the bowstring. It doesn't they might think the bowstring's important. They might go, you know what? He told us what we need to know, but one of your players is like, I really want that bowstring. Yeah, uh, listen, I want to, I want to, you know, uh, quiver my, how do you, draw my bow with, with that bowstring. Yeah, it's, it, draw. Yeah, draw. I forgot what it is, to string, to string the bow, is it string the bow? I think it's string. Okay, well, hey, here we are. <laughs> we ain't archers, folks. <laughs> we ain't archers. I try to remember back to what I watched, uh, the, the, the made-for-TV movie, The Odyssey, where, where Odysseus, you don't remember this? No. Oh, like it was it was great. Okay, and he he oh, I, strung it with lamb guts. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just it's just the end of the the movie when like you know in, in the Odyssey when he comes back he's disguised the old man and everyone's trying to to to, to string, hump his wife. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's trying to, to to marry his wife and string the bow, and he he comes in, he strings the bow, he fires it through the the uh the, all the. The, the axes that are set up and then he, he, he's revealed to be Odysseus and he kills everyone <laughs> it's just great. it was it was great <laughs> so, sounds like a hip <laughs> Whew. okay sorry I'm, I'm <laughs> off subject I'm, I'm fired up let's do it because <laughs> you really hate stonewalling um, I do it, it it's not that you aren't again what what is a better way to tell your players that something isn't going to work is effectively this players say we're going to go to tibet sure okay i guess if that's what you want to do you go to tibet or your players are in the town where all the shit's going down and they're like remember that little bar that was you know 35 miles off to the west we're heading to that bar because that's our favorite bar in all the land and if your players decide to go off and do that, send them there. And then when they get there, guess what? Nothing's happening. Okay. It's a quiet night in the bar. Okay. If you want to start a bar fight, you're going to be the ones doing the start. What's <laughs> <laughs> coming up to you guys? No one's coming up to you guys. Like this. You're, it's your favorite bar. Everyone freaking knows you. Do you, do you have any, do you have any, any work for us? Oh no. Another group of travelers came through and we took care of it. Make them be like, this is really stupid. Why did we go all the way out of our way to engage with this bar? <laughs> and exactly. You have two choices. You win one, placate them, and, and get, all right, you guys go to your favorite bar and, and get into a bar fight if you are interested in that. The other one is they get there and there's nothing to do. Like, guys, this isn't where the action is. The action is in the Tark town of Glegloth. So, Not so, at your favorite so bar. They, they, they start you know, coming back with their tail between their legs. They, they start heading back to town. When they're miles out, you see fire in the town. Uh-oh, guess what? You weren't there to stop it. <laughs> Sucks to be you guys. Sucks to be you. Consequences. Consequences for actions that go against it. Consequences are better than the stone wall because the consequences say, if you don't sort of engage with the, the boundaries that I've given you, guess what? There's going to be consequences. And if you leave, maybe the town does fall to the undead. I don't know. <laughs> like... You know, and exactly. It's it's natural consequences. Now, I tend to, uh, when I when I do consequences, do it through, like, a sad moment, like, to ha help my players realize that it, this is the time to reflect on your actions. You know, for example, the, the dark town of Golgoth, you know, the lone survival stumbles into their favorite bar after they've just had a raunchous night of drinking, um, and he's lost his whole family because you guys decided not to be heroes because what I want to create is the hero's moment. Now, again, this is all dependent on the story that I want to tell. If you are amenable to them going back to their favorite bar and starting a bar fight with the bartender that they always start the fight with, go for it. It's an open world. But if you don't want them to leave, don't tell them, no, you can't do that. Don't what, ever. What, what is a better choice is either you let them go back back to the bar okay you let them go all the way back out to the bar or as they're leaving town ring the town bell that that you know an invasion is coming and the horror Welcome. of the undead is is upon them okay now they have a choice 
Do we want to go dick around in a bar, okay, and leave this town to whatever will happen from this horde of the undead? Or are we going to fight the undead? And, geez, serendipitous moment here, just as we were about to leave, the horde of the undead shows up. Like, oh my god. That isn't stonewalling your players. That is throwing a roadblock in their way that is like, hey, by the way, this is the story, and it's come to you. <laughs> yeah, having the story chase them is another completely optional thing. They all get back on their salvage vessel and start making way for land. Well, it seems the creature attached itself to the hull, or the engine just starts to stutter and die, and they find out that, you know, the creature has sabotaged their engine. Now they're alone at sea. Now they have to and go the salvage. And the ship a... starts following them. They have to go salvage apart in the in the the salvage ship okay like to, to do it you're not going to say you can't get away but i'm going to at least keep you around here a little bit longer to help you reflect i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let story. you think about that before you do it but the but the one thing and this is the worst thing that i that i hate as a player and sorry ken i love you dearly but you uh you do this to to yourself um, <laughs> um you you only have the one way to execute the story. You've only thought of the one way to execute the story, and you are not amenable to any minor changes in the way to execute the story. That is the worst type of stonewalling. That is every plan doesn't work, okay? And when every plan doesn't work, when everything that I choose to do as a player doesn't work, unless I do it the exact way, unless I go research the right tomes, unless I, you know, Im effectively handed the the boss and you know the dungeons and told where to go like i don't want to be told where to go i want to kind of figure my way through i want to be story. invited yes i want to be i want to figure out my way through your story i want to i want to explore the nooks and crannies of it because what tends to happen is if you only have one way to do it that means you never fleshed out the rest of the world that means you never thought about what my players might try to do and how they might try to interact with the world and or you are just not comfortable at all telling something that is not pre-written. Do not write your books like, do not write your story like a novel, nope. okay? It does not work that way. You must write your story as more of Cliff's notes. And guess what? The players kind of work around that. The players are going to ask different people that you never thought they'd ask for information and it's really simple. The players don't know that that person never knew the information, but you as a GM get to make that choice. It's a beautiful thing that happens behind the scenes, and your players look at you like you're a freaking wizard when you do it. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. And in and, and that form of stonewalling, if you've only got one way that a riddle can be solved, just understand. Okay, so uh, the previous company I worked for, we had like a, a learning day, right? where we all go for this giant conference and it's like an all day thing. And they had a box, right? And this box, we had to figure out, like, I don't know, it was like nine riddles that were around the room. And, um, you know, the, the riddles would, would lead us to what the combination on the lock was. I took one look at that lock and I said, it's attached to a clamp, very weak clamp that kept the case closed a very weak clamp so i just looked at it and i said okay and i bent the clamp and opened up the box without solving a single riddle yeah i got yelled at for that i got yelled at by my bosses like that's not how you're supposed to do this when they should have applauded like wow you looked at this in an entirely different way and that's the same way that we as storytellers should look at our players when they traverse all of our traverse when they when they pass our, our roadblocks and see ways that we did not anticipate we as as storytellers should applaud their ingenuity um welcome the change engage in the fancy dance because it, you know there, there's going to be that sudden oh god they're going to end this story really quickly and i don't have the next story set up okay take a take a week break so you can set up the next story do whatever you have to do, but just don't put them down for engaging their brain, looking at something in a totally different light and, 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 and hitting it with, with great accuracy. 
you know, let that, because when you, when you do that, it just, it takes away the prize of the players and, and you can't take that away from them. You know what I mean? You have to applaud it. So, you know, that's my thought. on that. I agree with that. I agree with that a hundred percent. Do you have anything else you want to talk about for this one, Jared? Uh, no, I think I'm pretty well said. I think that's, you know, kind of my thoughts. All right. Well, uh, if you completely disagree, you like to stonewall your players because ha ha ha, this is my game. It's going to be done my way. Uh, or if you, uh, you, uh, agree hey stonewalling is terrible you know let us let us know your thoughts we want to hear your thoughts on stonewalling uh so you can contact us at level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com or uh contact us at facebook.com slash level up your gaming you can uh go ahead and um you can go ahead and you know send us a, a little comment or whatever and we'll, we'll we'll reply to it um or you know if you want to have a topic that you'd like to hear us discuss maybe one of these episodes has kind of brought up something you're like Man, I'd like to hear their thoughts on X, Y, Z. Let us know. We'd be happy to talk about one of those. Love to talk about it. Um, and uh, if you uh, you know, if you can get us at all of the major podcast sites, uh, please share it with a friend, your family, other people that you know, uh, gaming group, so on and so forth. Um, we are on YouTube. So smash that like button. Smash it. Thank you, Jared. Uh, and uh, yeah, but we'll be back with next week with another episode. So for Jared. I'm Aaron. Have a great week, guys. Have a great week, everyone.